This week on LTC News. Okay, ready? It's flu season. As it's local season. election winners. Say congratulations, Roddy. Thank you. Very and much. restoring public art. Stay with us. Welcome back to LTC News. I'm your news anchor, Al Gentili. As your local news source, LTC News wants to hear from you. Like us on Facebook or send us your comments, gripes, and story ideas to ltcn at ltc.org. It was the day that couldn't come soon enough, Election Day 2016. As we all know, Republican Party candidate Donald Trump took the United States presidency. The local winners were Nikki Songus for Congress in the Massachusetts 3rd District and Ratty Mom was re-elected as state representative in the 18th district, beating Republican Kamara Kay. Sobin Pin of the Kamai Post was out on election night at the gatherings of Kay and Mom and filed this report. I'm Sobin Pin, editor of the Kamai Post, reporting for LTC News. I am about to talk to Kamara Kay, the Republican candidate running for 18 Middlesex district, right before the result coming in. Hi, uh, how do you feel? So Ben, it's been awesome. Um, I can't complain much. It's, it's. I feel great. You know, this. Uh, it's been an exciting race. I, uh, from the get-go, I don't think anyone would have thought I made it this well. Since I declared my campaign in June, in January of this year, it has been an awesome ride. We don't know what the result is going to be yet, but how do you feel? Let's just say. Uh, if you don't don't win this election, would you still say the same thing that, that you excited about this race? Of course, uh, I'm, I'm, no matter what the result is, I'm still going to be feel excited. And you, you see all the support of the loves and the community giving me, and I'm, I'm still excited, no matter what the outcome it is. I'm talking with former councillor Rathion, who ha is Democrat and also endorsed Camera Kai. Uh, how do you think the result tonight will be? I, th I don't know, it's very hard, but uh, uh, the whole com community is very excited. But I, I, uh, I think uh, most of Cambodian voters uh, would vote for Kamra Kai. And K stands for Khmer. Uh, Kamra means Khmer also, and, and I, because of his stands for uh, the democracy, stands for uh, against oppressions, and he believes that uh, the uh, uh, the, his independent voice uh, should be uh, heard. Ward 7, Precinct 1, Ratty Mom 579, Camera K 189. Yeah, I am with the state representative. Mom, he won by 4 to 1 uh, in this 18 Middlesex district race. And uh, we're here right now at his uh, reception party. And uh, we'll have some questions for him. Let's talk. So huge in your this system. That made it possible. Yeah. How do you feel? Well, I think I would have to say I feel honored and grateful for all the hard work that my team and the entire community and especially the voter. I want to thank the voter for caring so much that they're going to send State Reverend Mark back to fight for the community. That's what it's all about. It's about the community right here, the 18th district, the Highland, the Acre. That's what it's all about. This is my continuing to do the work as a state representative for the 18th Middlesex district. It's all about reaching out. It's about building relationship, unifying the community. That's what I stand for. Well, thank you. And what would you like to say to the people? I want to thank them for all of their trust and putting the vote in me so I can go back to fight for them at the Beacon Hill. Thank you. We can all breathe a sigh of relief that the campaigning is finally over. And now, let's go to Brian Dorrington, LTC Director of Municipal Programming, for his City Council Synopsis. Hello and welcome to the City Council Synopsis for the meeting of November 8th, 2016. I want to start by saying something profound about the recent presidential election. Unfortunately, I can't think of anything, so instead, I'm going to do this.
Now let's turn to everyone's favorite subject, fees. Yay. City manager Kevin Murphy presented a report on potential changes to the cost of various city fees. Many of the cost changes are nominal and some go up while others go down. My first reaction after reading the report was not how much the fees are being adjusted, but just how many different types of fees there are. I wanted to highlight a few of my favorites. At the top of the list is the $50 fee for owning up to 75 pigeons. The city actually has a classification of four different types of pigeons allowed. Racing pigeons, mature pigeons, sporting pigeons, and of course, fancy pigeons. Call me old school, but to me, they're all just car pooping pigeons. Other highlights include a fee to use the city's wooden horses. That'll set you back $1 per Sycamore Stallion or Maple Mustang. No word on how much a plastic pony will set you back. Aww. If you're like me and you're thinking about starting your own carnival, you should know that you'll be paying $10 per ride or game. And as of right now, it is $10 to register any pet in the city. But the city's proposing to double that fee for pets that aren't spayed or neutered. It isn't clear what the cost will be for pets that are both spayed and neutered. The most significant hike is the fee for registering a foreclosed property. Currently the fee is $100 per year and the city is proposing that it be increased to $1,000 per year. The city manager believes this will motivate banks to sell the properties instead of leaving them vacant. Councillor Mercier took it a step further and said that she believes there should be a monthly fee for bank owned properties. Earlier in the night, the zoning subcommittee met to review a proposal for a number of zoning amendments brought forth by the Development Services Department. The subcommittee was only able to address two of the many suggested changes. A discussion about in-law apartments took up a majority of the meeting. Development Services Director Eric Slagle put forth a plan with restrictions on in-law apartments. In addition to meeting zoning requirements, the homeowner would be required to prove that the occupant is an immediate family member and that they must obtain a permit every three years to continue to use their in-law apartment. Members of the Pawtucketville Citizens Council expressed opposition to the plan because they believe homeowners will take advantage of the system and use the in-law apartments for rental income. The subcommittee voted to enter into a recess and schedule a longer meeting for a future date. In responding to a council motion, Manager Murphy announced the city will be demolishing the vacant waterworks building located at 16 Hampshire Street. After the demolition, the area will temporarily be turned into a community garden. And in case you're wondering, yes, there is a demolition fee. It is unclear whether the city plans on charging itself or not. That's just a sample of what happened on the city council meeting of November 8th. Remember, you can watch the meetings in their entirety on LTC channel 99 or on demand anytime by visiting ltc.org. Thanks for watching. Be swell. No one thinks they'll get sick in the winter, but a lot of us do. At least for the flu, you can take precautions. Flu shots are available at Lowell Community Health Center. Let's learn more about this year's prognosis. So flu is a virus that's extremely contagious and typically peaks around the winter months here in New England. Um, it can spread by droplets from um, coughing, sneezing. Um, and so what people don't necessarily realize about flu virus is that you can spread these germs to other people even a day before you're symptomatic and for five to seven days after your symptoms appear. Um, scientists try to predict what strains of flu will be impacting people um, and they develop flu vaccines annually to try to combat whatever they think will be the most prevalent strain of flu. So here at Lowell Community Health Center, we're offering what's called a quadrivalent flu, which protects against four strains of flu. It's two types of influenza A and two types of influenza B um, in hopes that we can try to um, protect people against what's going to be out this season that can make you sick. Although it's not a guarantee that you will be protected against flu, it's the best chance that you have to protect you and your family against getting sick with flu virus. So anybody is um, able to get a flu shot once they're at least six months of age or older. Um, there really isn't anybody who's a, a, a candidate that shouldn't have the flu, but it's usually a good idea to get it in and around October or November before flu season starts. But what typically happens is that flu peaks in and around uh, January and people get nervous because the people around them are sick and so they come in looking for flu shots. The idea is that it's gonna take two weeks to build antibodies to the vaccine that you receive. So the idea is to get it earlier in the season and stay protected the whole season. 
Do you have any questions, any concerns? I don't. I usually get it every year, so... Beautiful. I'll be gentle and <laughs> be quick. Thank you. Uh, all right. A really big misconception that the flu vaccine itself is going to give you the flu, when in fact the flu vaccine is made up of an inactive virus, inactive meaning that it's not live. So it's not possible to give you the flu. However, some people that do have flu vaccine will notice that the arm themselves, where they get their injection, is either red or swollen, or they may even get a... Um, low-grade fever or some body aches. This isn't the flu though. This is sort of your body's um, response to the vaccine, building a good immune response. Um, usually the symptoms themselves are mild and dissipate within one to two days. Swab. Okay, ready? Great. Stings. Okay, my dear. Consider yourself vaccinated. Thank you. You're welcome. So folks in Lowell can get a flu shot by coming to Lowell Community Health Center, visiting local pharmacies um, or their doctor's offices. The idea is to get one early in the flu season. So it's uh, you know early November. This is a perfect time to get one. If you haven't thought about getting one already, um, we'd be happy to give one to you if you come on down. To get the best coverage, do not delay. Now, public art adds character and interest to the cityscape. Pawtucket Prism at the Lower Locks overlooking the Concord River was recently restored in a typically Lowellian collaborative effort. On Tuesday, November 1st, 2016, a speaking program and reception was held at the UMass Lowell Inn and Conference Center to rededicate the recently restored Pawtucket Prism sculpture. The Pawtucket Prism sculpture was created and installed in 1987 by Michio Ihara it can be found that the lower locks where the Pawtucket Canal and Concord River meet is just one of many public art pieces that can be found throughout downtown Lowell's historic and canal cultural districts. After many years, the sculpture fell into a state of disrepair and needed work. Ihara originally created the sculpture's striking cubes to be spun by water, which corroded the cubes it was difficult to maintain. With the help of the Community Foundation, local donors, art enthusiasts, and community partners, as well as Ihara himself, funds were raised to restore the sculpture, which are now new and balanced and moved by the wind. The rededication event included speakers which included Community Foundation Executive Director Jay Linehan, Lowell Mayor Edward Kennedy, Lowell City Manager Kevin Murphy, Middlesex Community College Board Jim Campbell, and Lowell National Historical Park Superintendent Celeste Bernardo. What typically happens around Lowell is that a couple of concerned citizens get an idea of what they want to do and they get some folks in the community to garner with them to get some support and that's exactly what happened here. Nice. This is a beautiful spot along the Concord River and, um, and anything like that that can add more, more value to the quality of life, I think, is good for the city of Lowell. Well, you know, in Lowell, we always talk about partnerships, and this couldn't have been done without the partnership that we have uh, in the city between the Community Foundation, the Lowell North National Historic Park, the University of Massachusetts Lowell, the city of Lowell, uh, University of Massachusetts President Marty Meehan, and uh, Middlesex Community College. We all work together to get things done. As I mentioned, that community spirit at all levels, so whether we, we agree, agree with each other politically or otherwise, that spirit of cooperation is, is always here. But this is Lowell, and Lowell is a place where people have passion, and people are committed, and it is just an honor for the National Park Service to work with all of the partners who have already been named here. After the speaking portion of the presentation, a ribbon-cutting ceremony was led by Mayor Kennedy along with the many community partners in a celebration of the restored and reintroduced key piece of public art. And now for our Let's Go segment, Courtney O'Malley brings us a preview of the Angkor Dance Troupe's performances in the next couple of weeks. This is Courtney O'Malley with Let's Go in the Greater Merrimack Valley. Today we're here in beautiful downtown Lowell to learn a little bit more about the Angkor Dance Troupe, who they are, and what their mission is. The Angkor Dance Troupe was founded in 1986 by a group of young refugees here in the Greater Lowell area. The Angkor Dance Troupe mission is to educate and preserve the Cambodian culture here in the Greater Lowell area and beyond. 
The Encore Dance Troupe has had the honor to perform not only here locally, but also throughout the United States. They've performed at the White House, in Philadelphia, in Boston. They've been featured on Chronicle, as well as an episode of Bizarre Foods here in Lowell. If you're interested in seeing the Acorn Dance Troupe perform here locally, they have two community performances coming up at the Merrimack Repertory Theater. On November 18th and 19th at 8 o'clock p.m., the Encore Dance Troupe will perform two different shows. It's a great opportunity for you to come out, see exactly what it is they do, and I'm sure you'll be very surprised at how beautiful their performances are. For more information and to purchase tickets, please visit www.encoredancetroupe.org. See you next week. In this week's Sunspot, Chris Scott of the Lowell Sun talks to Ratty Mom about his election victory and plans for the next two years in the State House. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Scott from the Sun. I'm the Enterprise Editor of the newspaper. Thanks for tuning in this to this evening's edition of Sunspot. With me is State Rep Roddy Mom. Uh, Roddy Mom was re-elected on Tuesday night to a second term. Um, Prior to the election, it looked like it might be a little bit close against fellow Cambodian Republican Kamara Kay, who ran for school committee. You might recognize his name last year. But Roddy um, ran away with the race. Uh, there's no doubt right now who the 18th Middlesex District wants to see as its state representative. So I want to say congratulations, Roddy. Thank you very much. So we'll ju we don't have too, too, too long here, so let's just get right to it. We'll talk some national stuff, some um, state stuff, and then your race. Um, you're a Democrat. Um, for full disclosure, I'm a Democrat as well. What do you make of the uh, the national scene and um, Donald Trump beating uh, Hillary Clinton, the Democratic nominee? Chris, let me thank my voter first of mm -hmm. all, and uh, just keep it quick. I love it that they're sending me back, and mm -hmm. I want to go back and to the best job that I possibly mm -hmm. can. I want to congratulate Cameron Kay on the, a well-run campaign. Mm -hmm back to the national stage. Sure, we'll come back to your race. And I, I have to share with you a little bit of where I came from, mm -hmm. just a tad. Chris, we are so fortunate. We are living here in the greatest country on earth. Mm -hmm. This is why everyone wanted to come here. Mm -hmm. I landed here. When I look back, I remember that most country don't even have the right to vote. And during the change of government, there is always bloodshed. Here in America, it's basically a handshake, handing over the key, and that's it. And we continue our lives. So we're not in the doomsday because the people do rule our greatest country. Mm -hmm. That is democracy. Were you surprised that Trump did as well as he did? When we were watching it last night in the newsroom, I mean, report after report on CNN, had him up in the battleground states, and I mean, it was clearly throughout the night, there was no doubt that it was going toward Donald Trump. What, what's your read on that? Chris, there was two part. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I was so focused on my campaign. Mm -hmm. I really did work from the get-go all the way till closing. Mm -hmm. I really did went straight out. And during my time when we went to my campaign headquarters mm -hmm. to welcome everyone. I was more worried about all my guys coming, have enough food to eat because they work all day with me. Mm -hmm. And so the focus on that, I believe it was not until like 11 o'clock mm -hmm. when I finally have a chance to go and look at the monitor of the TV. And yeah, I, I would have to say I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I was really shocked. But didn't Hillary win more of the um, the, the population. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, there's a little flurry of activity there for yeah. her very late in the evening, I believe. Yeah. So th those, those are the event that unfold for the entire country, mm -hmm. that uh, they do want to see change in how our elected officials speak up mm -hmm. uh, for, I, I guess, for the citizen who wanted to hear their voice. But it's what make America so great. All right. Um, speaking of speaking up, the current Republican governor, Charlie Baker, spoke up very loudly on two ballot questions, on question two, lifting the cap on charter schools, which he was in favor of, and on question four, legalizing marijuana for folks over 21 years old, which he opposed. Now, Charlie Baker, you know him very well. He's a very popular governor. but. He can't be really smiling today because the charter school question was defeated 
and the marijuana question was approved, just the opposite of what he had hoped would happen. So um, what do you think Charlie Baker is thinking this morning in terms of his popularity? He'll be on the ballot. He wasn't on the ballot yesterday, but he will be on the ballot in two years. So how do you think he's processing what happened yesterday? And by the way, he did endorse your opponent, Kamara Kay, which is standard operating procedure. But anyway, so what do you think he's thinking this morning, particularly in relation to those two questions? And we also know that you were an opponent of lifting the charter school cap too, so. Uh, yes. Chris, there is one thing on my thoughts since day one, when I ran the first time, and I never backed away from it. So much so that I even asked the Speaker of the House uh, personally that I want to be on the Education Committee mm -hmm. so I can study on it so much more to do the very best for all of our children. When I meet with all of the teachers, when I toured, matter of fact, all of the charter school in my district, there's three of them, mm -hmm. then touring the public school and talking to the teacher and seeing that our teacher some of them use their own money to buy supply for students, mm -hmm. that's wrong. Mm -hmm. So how can we afford everything and getting everything at the same time? It just doesn't add up, I'm sorry. Right. I know that the original ideas of the charter school was more like a farming, mm -hmm. where the ideas come out, the best of it, we take that and we give it to our public school. That never implemented. So those are my concern as well. Then moving forward, the charter school don't answer to our school committee, mm -hmm. our city councilor, mm -hmm. our city manager. Mm -hmm. I have a little problem with that. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Right. That never answered yet. So why are we trying to create more of a lift when our public school in my district in the city of Lowell is great? Well, let's just talk about that for a minute. We talked off camera before we began today about when Baker was out endorsing the question, he was saying he acknowledged that public schools were failing. So as I, I guess as the solution to that, he said, let's do more charter schools. But why not try to address those failing schools and fix those charter, those failing schools and focus on those failing schools, right? I'm with you. How can we not address what we have already? What, 96% of our students don't have that capability? I believe we do. I get it that we have choices and we want to give choices. And that's what's so good, that's why we have public school, private school. Mm -hmm. Charter school somewhere in between, which didn't have the full answer yet. Let's move on to that question four. Then we'll get. Uh, I, I want to get you on Baker, though. I, I, I want to get an answer to that question. How did you vote on question four? Did, did you feel the time was right for that to legalize mar recreational mar marijuana? When I uh, first of all, I'm all for the medical marijuana. Okay. We have the background yep. of that and understanding it. It helped a lot of people as well. In terms of Making it... Yeah, let's stick to... We're, we're just yeah. watching the time. The recreational I, marijuana. The recreational, I did not vote for it. Okay. The reason being is that I don't see the number as far as our kids who are six years old mm -hmm. don't know which brownie have it or, or have it or not. <laughs> yeah. Those are my concerns. You're referring to pot brownies, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so please, if you can tell me that six-year-old know the difference, as of right now, I just can't. There's not enough backing of what it's going to take place. So going back to my initial question on the que on the ballot questions, um, what kind of message do you think Baker's receiving today, the Governor Baker on those two questions? I haven't had a chance to talk to the Governor yet, but uh, I would have to say that here it is that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we believe in our public school and the support we need is toward our public school. Mm -hmm. That's where the resource should be. Why is it that schools are growing in number? Because there's not enough funding. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough to even create science classes, music class. Mm -hmm. Those are the key factor that to promote a healthy mind and a productive mind. Now following today's session between us, you're heading into the State House to attend an educational uh, committee meeting, correct? Yes. A four hour meeting, maybe this issue will come up and you can address some of these failing schools. Um, let's move on to your race. Um, you know. You had a debate at the Sun uh, prior to the election with Kamara Kay. It was a pretty spirited debate. I thought he did pretty well. Yes. You know, for in all honesty, I thought you did well too. But boy, you took care of him yesterday. What do you attribute such a resounding win to? I, I think it is uh, the combination. Chris, let me put it out there. It's not easy to put your name on a ballot. Mm -hmm. it takes uh, a lot of work. It takes a lot mm -hmm. of work. 
I have to say that thanks to the many volunteers, Chris, I said over and over again, it's not just me. It is the many friends and family that come out to support in me, mm -hmm. that they believe in me mm -hmm. so much that they put all of their effort. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm thanking all of them, and especially mm -hmm. the voter, for trusting in me to go back to do the job that I want to do. I want to be the best representative possible. Mm -hmm. a, um, a well known representative, a well known um, resident of the 18th Middlesex District was in that chair last week. I interviewed him, Steve Panagiotakis, and he expressed little doubt that you would, you would get back in. The district almost always votes Democratic, um, and in a presidential year, it will vote even more Democratic. So tell me, what are your top three goals uh, moving forward? And um, then we gotta start wrapping it up, unfortunately. My top three goals are public safety, mm -hmm. education, economic. Okay, just elaborate on each one a little bit if you can. So when we talk about education, we have world-class mm -hmm. uh, UMass of Lowell, MCC. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that our kids can and afford to go into this class. So we we're can talking affordability. Affordability is key, but that's much more applicable at the UMass Lowell level than it is that's on right. sex. But, but okay. those this has to translate. Right. Okay, we have to work with that. The parent, those are the question I ask, and they have been telling me when I go knock on doors. Let's turn on public safety quickly. We probably public have safety. about a minute left. I love the fact that we're working with the low police department, Chief Taylor, and all of the low police uh, officer that, that spent time, that I speak with them personally. I want to know. I want to know what is their concern. We need the funding to make sure we have the officer that yeah. will be on on to meet the resident, not on foot patrol, but on to meet the student, meet the Good citizen. The whole community That's policing right. model, right? Be then now, more yeah. important than that, you have to give the empowerment to the citizen. Mm -hmm. If they feel empowered that they can take back their street, mm -hmm. their home setting, that is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. I believe that the reason why we are moving in the, the line of it is much safer, mm -hmm. and that is because the citizen realize that they have to speak up, and they've been doing that. It's my understanding you have a meeting with the city manager following our meeting here today. Are you going to touch on economic development issues in that? But of course. Be, be sure to keep us posted. i got to wrap this up. Uh, Roddy, congratulations on your re-election. We you. look forward to working with you over the next two years. Uh, you know where to reach us at 491 Dutton Street. Again, I'm Chris Scott, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this evening's um, edition of Sunspot. We'll be back next week with another 15-minute segment. Thank you. And that wraps it up for this week's edition of LTC News. Remember, no matter who won the presidential election, one thing still remains the same. Lowell is a diverse, inclusive community powered by your open minds and open ears. Get involved, stay engaged, and ask us questions. Your elected officials and LTC are waiting to hear from you. I'm Algin Tilly. Be well.